mosques were used for teaching grammar and literacy to ordinary people. In time, colleges, known as madrasas, were set up. This is the madrasa Bu Inania. Its walls are covered with the rich, rhyming prose of the Quran. The mosque is only part of the complex, which contains both it and the madrasa. When the Sultan Abu Anan founded the place, he built the mosque alongside the madrasa. It is most symbolic. The mosque, built for prayer, was also a place which encouraged education and learning. As you can see, there is no separation. When the Quran was given to the Prophet, who was illiterate, the angel told him, read. Iqra. These inscriptions carved onto the walls are verses of poetry and can be found throughout the madrasa. But I think the most important section is here. What it says in Arabic is, I am the apogee of knowledge. Come, you Muslims. Come and learn, because with knowledge you can become what you want to be in the future. During the medieval period, knowledge was high on the agenda in the Islamic world. The Muslim societies produced many books in the various spheres of knowledge, and these books came to be known worldwide. It wasn't just an enlightened attitude to reading which placed learning at the heart of the Islamic world. Necessity was also the mother of invention. Because the Arabs were nomads and desert traders who often had to travel in the cool of the night, they were well versed in using the stars as guiding devices. This developed into a very sophisticated study of astronomy. Then with the establishment of Islam, that knowledge was applied in a new way. Whenever a mosque was built, the prayer niche had to be orientated in direct relation to Mecca. And there were a number of religious festivals that had to fall on certain days in the lunar year. These were complex mathematical problems for which the Muslims devised precise solutions. Islam became a culture which naturally embraced scientific and mathematical investigation. This uninhibited attitude towards learning meant that when Muslims encountered the teachings of other cultures, they seized upon them vigorously. early days of Islam, Muslims came into contact with a body of knowledge which had been ignored by most of Northern Europe for centuries. The works of the ancient Greeks. It's once you look at a globe that it becomes particularly easy to understand why the Arabs were such natural inheritors of Greek learning. From the Bronze Age onwards, there had been a constant exchange of artefacts and information all across the Eastern Mediterranean. And in fact, a number of Greek ideas stem from Eastern and Egyptian influences. The bulk of this knowledge was preserved in the great schools and library at Alexandria. And then in 641 AD, the Arabs take over the city and at a stroke have direct access to this precious learning. Many of these texts found their way to Fez. This is an Arabic translation of Aristotle with an additional commentary by the Muslim scholar Averroes. The translation is done in Iraq and then Averroes does this commentary in Al-Andalus. There's even an early Arabic translation of the Bible. So it's extraordinary, isn't it? Arabic's the, the, the lingua franca. Everybody's writing in Arabic, even the Bible. ثم 